In my last video, I made these copper and silver tubes to demonstrate Lenz's law. If I drop this powerful magnet down the tube, it takes a long time to get to the bottom. That's because of an opposing magnetic field that's being produced called eddy currents. And if you want to know more about that, then check out the first video. In today's video, I'll be doing something similar, but instead of making small tubes, I'll be making a gigantic one. This thing's going to be almost 20 pounds of copper almost 10 kilograms. And instead of using this little magnet, I'm gonna use a much larger one. I'm gonna go get it. Well, here it is. This thing doesn't look like much, but it has a 400 pound pull force, which is kind of terrifying. I mean, 400 pounds on such a small surface area that would take my fingers off. If you wanna see how I turn this 3D print into a copper tube, then follow along with the process. If you just wanna click ahead and see how well it works, then I'll leave a chapter in the timeline. I used the same process to make this as I did the last ones. I started with a 3D print and then I coated it in a special ceramic material called suspend slurry. Over the course of a week, I coated the 3D print about nine times and in between each coat, I sprinkled it with some fused silica sand. This helps build up a thicker shell and it also adds some strength to it. Once that was done, I placed it in my kiln to burn out the plastic. At about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it cracked really badly, which isn't a surprise, but I was able to fix it by patching it with some fiberglass fabric and some more slurry. Once that was dry, it was back into the kiln to melt out the plastic and vitrify the shell, which turns it into a really durable ceramic mold. While that was heating up, I started melting the 20 pounds of copper. I'm using copper wire, which is more pure than the copper tubing that I used in the last video. This should make the effect even better, as pure copper will have the lowest possible resistance. Once all of the plastic was melted out of the shell, I blew out any remaining ash inside, which will result in a nicer casting. I had a little bit of trouble pouring the metal into the mold because it was just really heavy and kind of difficult to control. Now I get to break it apart and see what the casting looks like. As expected, the metal did shrink in some areas, resulting in some ugly defects, but that's not going to be a problem for this experiment. To remove the shell from the inside of the tube, I used my sandblaster. It was pretty simple to clean this thing up. I just used a file to get rid of any sharp edges and a die grinder to polish it up. Oh. 
Well, here it is. This thing ended up weighing 17 and a half pounds, a little bit less than I was expecting, but still a lot. I had 20 pounds in my crucible, and that's about the limit of what I can do by myself, I think. As you can see in the video, I had some trouble actually pouring it into the mold because it was just such a large mass of liquid in there that actually was, when it sloshed around, it was hard to counter it. But anyways, I got it done, and I think this thing looks good enough for the experiments we're gonna be doing. So I have played around with this quite a bit, and I was a little bit disappointed with how well it worked. I think it's a little bit too small. So I ordered an even bigger magnet, and that thing truly is crazy. But first, let's check this out. Okay, so if I drop it this way, it takes a long time to get to the bottom, and if I put a little bit of a spin on it, it works a little bit better. I think it stabilizes it just a little bit. If I drop it this way, it falls much faster. And that has to do with how the magnetic field is coming off of the magnet and where the poles are. What's really strange and what you don't see in the camera is how much resistance there is on the magnet when it's inserted here. It feels like a gyroscope. If you've ever held a gyroscope and you try to move it around, it fights you, but it sits happily in whatever position you leave it in. It's like it's suspended in a really viscous liquid. It's very strange. Later, I'm gonna attach a string to this and hopefully we'll be able to see that a little bit better. Okay, let's get that bigger magnet and see how well that thing works. Well, here it is. This is an N52 neodymium magnet. So that's the most powerful neodymium magnet you can get. And this one is three inches by one inch. So let's see how well it works. <laughs> that is so strange. Isn't that cool? It just, just floats down there. It takes a couple seconds to get to the bottom. And this thing is really fighting me. It does, does not want to leave. It's, it's like just stuck in here. See how much resistance there is there? So if I do that out here, and then I bring it in here, it just, it's, it's stable. Another thing I can do is I can move this tube around without even touching it. Look at that. Wow. Same thing on the inside. It, there's so much resistance. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's almost like I'm grabbing onto a handle and I'm just rotating the tube from the inside. It's really interesting. Another thing I can do is if I put the magnet in the center like this, I can rotate this at the, just the right speed and the magnet will actually stay in the center. It'll stay airborne. It's kind of hard to do here because I'm just going to run out of table space, but it does work. Okay, now I have a piece of string on the magnet and we're going to see, hopefully I can show you what I mean by the resistance. Yeah, yeah look at that. It's, it's just in the middle and I can't really manipulate it. It just wants to stay where it is. Really strange. <laughs> but what if I put a spin on this? Wind it up. Let it go. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Well, this was a fun project and there are a ton of different experiments that I can do with these. What I want you guys to do is let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions and then in the next video, I'll try to get to as many of those experiments as I can. Again, I'm not a physicist. I'm just a guy who made some copper and silver tubes, bought some magnets and is making some observations, but it should be a fun video anyway. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider supporting me on my Patreon. I post project updates there and you'll also gain access to any of my 3D printing files. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please let me know what you think in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for future projects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.